Now that we've talked about the RBAC, let's uh, implement it a little bit. Uh, I've done a lot of different things here, and you may take these uh, with a grain of salt, but uh, I want to show you how I uh, implemented these here. First of all, I'm not logged in, and you have to remember that because uh, the application is accessed through URLs, anybody could type anything. For example, they could type users here. Now, they take them right back to this login pa page. Another thing is, is someone may log in, bookmark, and then try to come back to that uh, bookmark. And you know you want to be able to, to ensure that those who you want to log in or that have access to certain aspects of the program really do. The reason that um, nobody has access, whether you're logged in or not to this, is that because under these access rules in the controller, and I would definitely define this for every controller what you want, the default should be deny all of users. So no matter what I set up before this, if it, nothing matches, it will deny all the users. But what I want to do is I do want to give some users some access. So let's first of all log in. I am now logged in and I know what my rights are. But let's go to users. You can see that I don't have permission. It denies all users, so I also don't have permission. So what I'm going to say is now allow uh, allow access to these actions here and these are all of them that have been created by the G uh, tool for this controller and I'm gonna say that um, you can do these things if you have the role of super admin now this roles has nothing to do with the state that we had set here in the user login so we set state role to uh, the description um, right there but that has nothing to do with this roles this is a key variable here um, and it has to be this exactly now what this will do is it use these the authentication manager and if you don't have authentication manager uh, implemented at the in your config file this this won't even do anything and all it does is it goes and looks at a couple of uh, tables first of all it goes and looks at this table right here and that's where it gets roles. That's all it is. It says, does this user have this role? Now you can't, because of the way the database is set up, assign to this table the super admin unless it is in the item table. So let's, I know this is a little bit of review, but I think it's worth it. Here you can see I have two items, a super admin and a user. Now I have nothing in the child table. So no children at all, just in the just in the assignment table and by simply doing that I could say now this roles if you're a super admin again this is a word that I created if you're a super admin then you should be able to do all of these things so I'll save that I am logged in as Kurt Clement and we'll check and see if we have access to users fantastic from here I'm gonna go into my view layout and my main.php the reason I'm going to go into my layout is that is where this menu up here is created. And what I want to do, and I, I plan on having this strategy here um, going forward, is I don't just want to prohibit people from doing things, but I don't want to give them the options of selecting things that they shouldn't be able to do. So what I'm going to do here is on the menu is I'm going to create the menu item users if you have access to that. Now if you don't have access, you shouldn't see this at all. So now I'm actually using the check access. Now this checks at check access has to exist. This manage users has to exist. Now I can imagine that this is a group of operations. So in other words, it's a task. So let's make those entries in the table for this user. So the first thing I did, is I had to create an uh, authentication item and I just called this manage users here. I put it as a task of type 1 because I imagine that this will actually be a group of operations. Although you can see all user operations is here, but there are no operations for which it covers. The next thing I had to do is I had to create a child because that's where the authentication actually gets checked. And I said that the parent, which is a role, uh, has a child of managed users. That simple addition is all I need in order to check the role here so super admin can manage users now what are we doing here we're saying that if the current user has access to manage users or in other words is a super admin then show this menu so if we save this refresh you can see now I've got this users here 
and I can click on it and it will take me right to here. So again, I want to emphasize that whenever possible, don't give people the access to do things or the ability to choose things that they don't have access for is a better said. Now, of course, because I can bookmark this or I can save this, watch, I'll save this, I'll log out. And if I uh, bookmark this but I hadn't logged in, I go to here and it doesn't allow me to go, it takes me straight back to the login. Okay, that's important. And that is managed by the user controller right here. Okay, so now we've got two things here. The last thing I want to do is when I create a user, I want to be able to assign him a role automatically. So I want to make entries into the authentication tables. So here I can create a user. And what do I want to have happen here? Well, first of all, I want to fix this up. Mostly, I want to get rid of these two fields here. I just want to create a username and password and assign them a role. But I want to make sure that I only assign them a role that is uh, an applicable role for them to have. In the views of users, this underscore form is where the information right here comes from. Well, that's easily enough uh, manipulated here by saying I only want those two. Let me do something else with the roles. But I want to delete these two. By simply deleting those HTML uh, rows, when I refresh this, you'll see that they're gone. Now that doesn't handle all of my uh, issues here because first of all, when I go to my uh, model, go to my user's model, the default here is that these are required. So I'm going to say that those two are not required just by simply deleting these two here. So now those aren't required. But I do want to make entries in for those fields. Now the last updated is actually null, and that will get a timestamp from the database. But the date created is not. And so when I go here to create under my user's controller, I want to be able to set that date created. So I'll do that simply by setting the field of the model that I'm in, which is the user control model, the user's model. And I'll say that the date created is the current date right here. So I'll save that. I'll go ahead and leave last updated null, which will just timestamp it because it will change it there. But now I've got to fi fix that role. Okay. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to do a drop down box. So here I've deleted the simple text field and I added a drop down list. Here I say what I want you to do is I want you to update the role's ID which is going to get passed uh, to the create function. I want to say I want you to get that list from my roles model or from my roles table, find them all. What I want you to pass me is the ID, but I want you to show the description. And I want the default to be the second one that you selected. So let's take a look at how that looks. I'll refresh here. Now this comes from my roles table, not from my authentication table, and that's key. The second one, user, is the one that is selected, but of course I could choose either one. And if I wanted to do that based on roles, but right now Super Admin is the only one who could create users. Now I don't want to just create the role and um, have it go into the database, but I also want to provide the authentication. So let's do that over here in the user controller. And so now here in the users model, I've uh, created and saved the user, but I want to make entries into the authentication table. First of all, I got to put brackets. Don't forget to put these brackets here. The G default doesn't put the brackets because it's executing one line. Uh, that's just bad programming style, but whatever. So the first of all, I need to create a new model, and this is going to be an auth assignment model. Okay. I'm going to set the user ID to whatever the model ID is. Remember that we have the user ID attached to the model to the to the model ID. Okay, so then I want to set the item name to the roles name. So remember we had cho choice admin and users. I'm going to find that name, which is the description, by looking at the primary key, which in the model is the roles ID. So I get that description. So I get that description and it becomes the item name. And finally, I need to save it. Now, 
I could do an error check here and do different things based on that just like we do here but for this purposes here I'm just going to save that okay we save that now let's go back and create a user okay now remember I need a unique name um, Kim Clement is already a user in our database so I'm gonna do Xena I need to choose a role from her which comes from our roles table not from our authentication table I'm gonna choose user and I'm gonna create here it's user number 40 automatically incremented these are automatically put in and the role is two now let's go look and see what happened in our authentication assignment table we can see that user number 40 is a user now I'm gonna do something here and make a mistake I'm gonna create another user and I'm gonna set them to admin now you should be able to guess why this would fail okay failed spectacularly should be able to fail nicer huh can you guess why this failed? Well, because in order to insert into the authentication database, I need to be able to have this be an authentication item. So I already had user. You see my items here. I've got a user role, a super admin role, and a manage users task. I've got a user role, but I don't have a admin role. So because my roles table isn't connected to my authentication table, I'll just create another authentication item for now. Call that admin role of type two. Now I've now I see that what I've got for my admins now when I create the user, Miranda admin create no errors. I go to my authentication assignment table. I see that uh, Miranda here is an admin. Now, let me log out. Remember, I'm logged in and this is, I am a super admin. And that allows me to see this users table here. Now, admin is just a word. It means nothing else. And if I log in as Miranda, I am logged in as Miranda, I don't see that menu item. Being an admin means nothing if I haven't set up the authentication. So that's the end of how I would implement some of the aspects of authentication, uh, assigning when I um, need to, uh, prohibiting when I'm viewing menus by checking access, and most importantly, assigning roles to what uh, features you should have. There's a lot more that I could do with this, but I think that covers uh, the nut of uh, RBAC.